is. Yeah, yeah how the butterfly is formed. So the butterfly starts as a, a larva, isn't it? Yeah, so we've got there the cat caterpillar. And it eats and eats and eats and eats until it stops eating and then it forms a pupa. Yeah? And then that pupa also is where it is, in other words, it's a chrysalis. It begins to form something like a cocoon. And we see the butterfly is emerging from it. So what we're trying to say is that in 2024, each and every one of us wants it. The end goal is to be the butterfly. And what does that mean? The butterfly, we pray this morning about purpose. And that butterfly is a, is a continuum. Because this year your butterfly status may be one, one purpose. So next year your butterfly purpose status might be another but we want to transform. We cannot all be caterpillars. We can't stay as caterpillars. Come on. We can't stay as caterpillars. Well, the caterpillar will die. Because if it eats and eats and eats and doesn't metamorph into the next stage, it dies. There are conditions around, conditions in the environment that may hinder the progression from a caterpillar to a pupa and a pupa to the butterfly. But that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Because we will actively progress from one stage to the other in Jesus' name. Amen. And you know, we were singing a song today. One of the songs we were singing, which one was it, Sweet Holy Spirit? We, I think the one of that, um, I have decided to follow Jesus. And you know, the Spirit dropped in my, in my heart that we need to encourage one another. We need to give each other permission to ensure that we follow Jesus in 2024. We give each other permission to hold us accountable, to follow Jesus, to, follow Jesus, to help, help us be accountable, to fulfill purpose. One of the prayers we prayed, Jesus came to fulfill the law. And in fulfilling the law, he enabled us to follow his word. And in his word, there's an assignment for it, articulated for each and every one of us, depending on how we capture it. And as we delve into the word, he will speak to you. There's, there's no doubt about that. Anyway, this is the preamble. So, trans, so, so tell your neighbor, welcome, welcome. To, transformation. to transformation in 2024. In we must transform. We must transform. We will transform. We will transform. Hallelujah. Kaneshi, God bless you, son. You're looking very sharp. You're transforming. <laughs> we bless the Lord. Hallelujah. So, you know, trans so this transformation in 2024, remember the key scripture the Lord gave us in uh, at the breakthrough uh, course of the night was taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, where it said that if any man be in Christ, he is a new cre creation. That all things have passed away. Behold, all things have, uh, uh, have become new. Therefore, implying... That we have made a choice that in this 2024 we are progressing from we're progressing from the old to the new. And that might even be in our character. In anything that will prevent the movement from one stage of our change to another. We all started somewhere. So remember, if you remember that night, and I encourage us to be listening to the message, forget the fact that some of the sound is not as great as it should be, but that was our, the, the venue we had, etc., etc. But there was something about, um, the, the evangelist said at one point that some people, that when they come to Christ, automatically, they, overnight, their life just changes, and you know, they just plug into and are all on fire, etc., etc. Some people, it's a process. But be that as it may, we have to get to the end goal. And we're accountable in the body of Christ to support each other. That is why we have leaders. That is why we are all students. We're all disciples of his word. That is why there's somewhere that everyone can plug into. That's why we all have a function to fulfill. That is why we are all in, in, expected to tell someone else about your experience. To share your testimony. And so... To the title of our message today is What Are Your Associations? Because in the process of transforming, we need to understand who and what are you associated with. 
You've got to be intentional in 2024 about who and what you associate with. Tell your neighbor, be intentional, be intentional. About, about who, who and what about. you associate with. You associate with. We have to be intentional because remember there are there are factors around us that may hinder progression. We are therefore not to be ignorant of it. So we look at this Nehemiah. So we, we're looking at this story. We start. We entered into a place where it started off in verse four of this Nehemiah thirteen of telling us that. Ne that um, prior, he says, now prior to this, Eliashib, the priest, who was appointed over the chambers of the house of our God, being related to Tobiah. You might wonder, who is Tobiah? Let someone please return to Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 10. Because we'll, we'll meander around Nehemiah today. Nehemiah, Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 10. Please. When Sambalak, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite official, heard of it, they were deeply disturbed that a man had come to seek the well-being of the children of Israel. Thank you. So you know when we're praying this morning, one of the prayers was about, we saw that um, some people had held themselves in an oath. They fasted and said, we will kill Paul. And I remember the testament of a man that he was traveling somewhere. He was on the plane with someone. And this guy, he was, on the, he was going to a city to minister. And he was sitting, the person he was sitting next to, every time they bring food, you know, to, you know, you know if you're in, on the plane, they offer you. Like, you know, not these days where we've got the, um, the, the place where you've got to actually pay, you know, the, the cart is going along and it's asking you what do you want. But, you know, so they're offering you, you know. And every time they were bringing food, this guy would say, no, thank you, no, thank you. And by the time they were getting to their destination, he said, because he assumed this guy was a Christian and was like fasting. And he said, no, that he was, he's a Satanist actually. And they are fasting because there's a crusade going on in the city. And this is the crusade this guy was going to. They are fasting. All the Satanists were fasting because they didn't want the outcome of that crusade. And so... Just to let you know that when God is calling you to, 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 to mortify the flesh in preparation for what he wants, it's not, it's not something that is going to kill you. There are those that are your enemies that also do likewise. Mm -hmm. And so he, we see here that no, no, Tobiah, this Tobiah, the, the bit we read was about Tobiah and Sambalat. That beginning part of Nehemiah, Nehemiah is all about um, um, Nehemiah, who served the king. He was the cupbearer of the king, the trusted, a trusted official of the king. Because when the king wants to have wine, someone has to taste it in case there's poison in it. And that was Nehemiah's job. And so he was trusted. But then he had the desire to go out and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And he sought permission from the king. And therefore... He had now come, and the bit that we just read in Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 10, Tobiah and Sambalat, when they heard that he had come, were angry. So they were not supportive of God's agenda. And so let it be known to you that in 2024, there are people that are not supportive of God's agenda in your life. Mm. I'm just letting you know, just in case you know you think that everyone loves me. Yeah, everyone loves me. Everyone supports my agenda. You know, God is blessing me. And they're all, oh, yay. You know, on the side when I say, up you, you know, well done, cherry on. It's not the case, you know. They might be showing their teeth, but really, <laughs> they've got a dagger <laughs> to stab you. So anyway, we're just starting. So you'll see here that Tobiah, Tobiah wasn't a cool guy. Yeah, he wasn't really on God's side. But this Tobiah, it says, now, prior to this, this, Eliashib, the priest, who was appointed over the chambers of the house of our God, being related to Tobiah. So we want to stick in the fact that he was related to, to Tobiah. So essentially, he was related to an enemy of God, of God's people. We're talking today about what are your associations. 
Are you associating yourself with someone who is on your side or not? That's why there's something we say in this ministry. If, you have, if you've hung around long enough, when you see the evangelist, what will he ask you? What is God saying? What is God saying? And also, what, how are we supposed to know people? In the spirit. So don't take people as, at face value. Because we are supposed to see in more than one dimension. We're not supposed to see things in the two. You know, the world as it is, is two dimensional. But we're supposed to see in the seventh, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh dimension. And so, he was related to the buyer. And so, let's look at verse 28 also. Can someone read verse 28 of this um, Nehemiah 13? Because we want to understand that Tobiah, who was a priest, was related to, sorry, Eliashib, who was a priest, was related to Tobiah in marriage first, as well as in friendship. Can you read 28, please? And Nehemiah 13, 28, and one of the sons of Jodiah, the son of Elisha, the high priest, was son-in-law to Sambalat, the Horonite. Therefore, I chased him from thee. Thank you. So you see this Sambalat again. So Sambalat was an enemy of the Jews as, as well as Tobiah. But we see that Eliashib, his son, it, it, it tells us that he was, he was affiliated, allied to Tobiah by marriage. His, his son, his grandson, his grandson was was married to Sambalat's daughter. Can you imagine? His grandson was married to Sambalat's daughter. And if we look at Nehemiah 6 verse 18, it will tell you that Tobiah was married to a, a daughter of the priest, of a priest called Shakariah. And his son was also married, his son was was married to a daughter of Meshulam, who was also a priest. That is in Nehemiah 6, verse 18. So what we're trying to say is that there was some intermarriages going on between supposedly priests and people that weren't even of the, of the, the nation or house of Israel. Ammonites and Horonites were being married. And what does the Lord, what did the Lord tell priests? They were supposed to be very careful on who they married. Let's look at Leviticus 21, verse 14 to 15. You know, we've got to be intentional in 2024 on our associations. Intentional on who we we, we mingle with, we dance with, we hang out with, we, we say, I'm joining with you, you know, it's me, it's you or, it's you or I die. <laughs> no, no, no. Shika Hanga. Maybe to this. Are we there? 21, 14, and 15. A widow or a divorced woman, or profane or an harlot, these shall he not take, but he shall take a virgin of his own people to wife. Neither shall he profane his seed among his people. For I, the Lord, do sanctify him. Amen. So, thank you. So, 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 your version says, I, the Lord, do sanctify him. Otherwise, some versions say, I am the one who consecrates him. Essentially, consecration, sanctifying, is the act of being set apart. It's the act of being holy. God is the one who makes us holy. And he gives us instructions that enable holiness to be maintained. Mm. And so in this particular case, he's saying of high priest. Because Tobiah was not just a priest, he was actually a high priest. I.e. he was in charge, the oil was upon his head. To ensure that the things of the law are taught the people. He was a teacher, the, the teacher of the teachers. That's in the Hema 3 verse 1 tells us that he was a high priest. So he was, there was a content. He, he took his consecration in contempt. He did not regard his consecration. 
He disregarded it. He disregarded the all that was on his head. He disregarded the fact that the Lord has set him apart because he began to mingle with people that God said not to mingle. And if you remember the story of Solomon, Solomon married 300, was it 300 wives and 700 concubines? And from every nation that he was supposed not to. Such that by the time he got old, these women drew his heart away from God. Mm. And so, but the instruction was to marry from your own, to marry those that have been, that have not been defiled, etc., etc. But we saw that he went against that. What does 1 Peter 2 verse 9 tell us? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. You are, I'm sure you know that. Yeah. 1 Peter 2, 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Thank you. So we see that you and I, in Christ Jesus, to maintain, to ensure your transformation, in your transformation, in, the, in your status of being transformed, you are a royal priesthood. That means you are royalty. You are a priest. We are all, therefore, by virtue of having given our lives to Christ, having been birthed into that new family, having now been a new creation, we are royalty. We are priests. We are set apart. That is an awesome, awesome status to have. But do you uphold it or do you despise it? Do you, do you hold that status in contempt? And holding in contempt is like to Eliashib here was associated with the wrong people. You know, if there's anything you need to value and be intentional about in your associations, be it where it's to do with your brand, your value that brands you, or marriage that, that, that yokes you together, is your salvation. Is that person saved? Are they passionate as on, on, as on fire? Are they as on fire for the things of the Lord as I am or even greater? What does 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 14 to 17 tell us? Because the worst thing you can do to yourself is associate with the wrong person. In business, in marriage, they pull you back. You're not on the same page. You're saying fast and they're saying, no, we have to eat brown rice today. We have to eat swallow today. Whether you like it or not, this body has to eat. And then, you know, you're only as strong as the weakest link. Mm. And in 2024, we want to pray. We want to pray to rid ourselves of the flesh. To enter the dimensions that the Lord wants us to enter such that we can navigate 2024 with the speed and the effectiveness God has ordained. Yet, second, are you there? Second Corinthians 6, verse 14 to 17. <laughs> yes. But ye not unequally yoked. Sorry? Be, be not. Ye. Yeah, be not. Be ye not unequally yoked, <laughs> therefore, with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness, yes? And what communion has light with darkness? What communion has light with darkness? Mm -hmm. But what concord has Christ with Belial? And what concord has Christ with Belial? That's the name of an idol. Uh -huh. Or what has he that believes with an infidel? What has he that believes with an infidel? Is that all? Is that verse seven, up to 17? 
Verse 16, and what arrangement has the temple of God with idols? Yes. For ye are the temple of the living God. So you and I in Christ are the temple of the living God. Go on. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So God dwells in us, and we are his people. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. So he's saying, come out from among them and be separate. Mm -hmm. Says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Don't and, touch the unclean thing. Yeah. And I will receive you. And I will receive you. So the Lord there, so the Lord there is giving us a, a, an understanding that in your consecration, you're consecrated and set apart. Because you're, you're not allowed, remember we're moving from being a lava to a butterfly. You're not to allow those external factors that will tarnish your consecration and inability to progress from one stage to another. Because God has not called us to stay as milk drinkers. Those who are disciples are not to stay as milk drinkers. They've got to a point of being able to eat meat and then strong bone. And they're not the ones that, as we're saying, we're calling a fast and then they're crying and saying, nah, I can't do it. Oh, yeah, yeah, who said you can't? The scripture says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. And so it is, the issue is that we saw that, that one is the relationship between light and darkness. Darkness wants to quench the light. And that is where the obstacles come. We, so we are on our 21 day fast and we're in day what? Five. Yeah, day five. We bless the Lord. And all are fasting, the young and old. And if, if the young ones haven't caught up to speed, begin to get them because you want to prepare them. You want to enable them to be able to fight their fights and stand firm because your house is only as secure as the weakest link. And so it's in your best interest to ensure that you are all spiritually attuned. No one is too young. And I'm saying it from experience. Pregnancy is not an excuse. So those listening that are pregnant and you're saying, I'm pregnant, oh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 we've been there, bought the t-shirt. <laughs> because, you know, we all are getting somewhere. And God is in his graciousness, he wants to take us all along. And so, and so we're, we're, we're talking about the fact that Eliashib was a high priest and yet he was associated with haters. Tobiah and Sambalat, read Nehemiah, it's an interesting book to read. When you read it, you see that Tobiah and Sambalat were continually conspiring against Israel and the buildings of the temple. They were constant in their conspiracy. And then it goes on in verse 5 to say that they had prepared a large room for him, where formerly they put the grain offerings. The frankincense, the utensils, and the tithes of grain, wine, and oil prescribed for the Levites. So what we're seeing here in verse 5 and 7, that Eliashib, the high priest, was very unfaithful to his high charge. You know, he brought reproach on the priesthood. You see, your life, your assignment, your walk in 2024 is not to bring reproach on the things of God, but it's actually to make God attractive. That's why it says in Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Your life is supposed to be a light. Well, it is in the spirit realm, if your eyes are open in spirit, you will see those whose lights are shining. Our lives, our, our lives glow in the spirit. And it is a shine so much so that in the world, it, it passes from the supernatural into the physical, that the world begins to question, why are you the way you are? Let your light so shine before men. But you see here, Elias, he says in verse 5, he had prepared a large room for him, that him here is Tobiah. For where formerly they put the grain offerings, the frankincense, the utensils, and the tithes of grains, 
wine and oil prescribed for the Levites, the singers and the gatekeepers, and the contributions for the priests. So what, what had he done? What had Eliashib, the high priest, so this is the guy the oil was on his head. He was in charge. He tells you in um, verse 4 that he was appointed over the chambers of the house of our God. He was in charge of the chambers. He was in charge of what happened in the house of God. And what did he do? The rooms that were dedicated, so if you read the, the temple, you know, and the various rooms in the temple, what their functions were. He, there, was, there were rooms where the storehouse is, the storehouse. Remember Malachi, what does it tell you? Malachi chapter 3 verse 8. It tells you bring all the storehouse, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat. Very. And, you know, the, the storehouse, the room for the storehouse, Eliashib had despised the fact that that was a requirement of the house of God. And he got rid, he threw out the storehouses. He threw out, he, 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 he shut the door, he shut the door on that function. And actually, instead of there being room, rooms for the, the, the tithes and the offerings and the burnt offerings, it says the frankincense, the grain offerings, the frankincense, the utensils and the tithes of grain while are prescribed for the Levites. The portion of the Levites, the singers and the gatekeepers, the contributions that were supposed to come into the house of the Lord, ceased. It didn't happen because Tobiah was now in the room where those things were. Look at verse 10. What does it say in verse 10? It says, I also discovered, this is Nehemiah, that the portions of the Levites had not been given them. So that the Levites and the singers who performed the service had gone away, each to his own field. Is your association such that the purposes of God are stifled? Is your association drawing you closer to fulfillment of assignment or is it drawing away? Have you got friends that are saying, you know, let's go party, but you're saying that I need to pray. Or let's go here, but you're saying the Lord wants me to know him better. I need to spend this time I have in his word. Or are you saying, tell me friends, say, let's go and see the Tower of London. Let's go and see this, go and see, go and see that. But the Lord, you know in your heart, the Lord is pointing you somewhere else. The fact that Eliashib had brought Tobiah and Oh, I even missed somewhere. I even missed something else, even before getting to, to that point. No, no, we can come to that. Sweet Holy Spirit. We'll come to that. Shaham Boshahim. He, so the association, the, so there was a function. Levites had a function in the house of God. Singers, we talked about it, was it some weeks ago? The fact that oh, maybe it was the time we were praying. There were people that had the job of singing. In the house of God, worshiping God. There were Levites that had a function of offering. Remember, we said the, 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 the fire was not to go out. Morning and night, the fire of the bur of burnt offering was to be burning in the house of God. The, the Levites were to eat from the tithes and the offerings. But because that room was closed and occupied by Tobiah, the priests had no sustenance and therefore couldn't fulfill that function. Therefore, a function in the house ceased. Remember, the Bible tells us that the body consists of many parts. Everyone has a function to fulfill. Ask yourself, are you fulfilling the function God has given you to fulfill? And not just are you fulfilling that function, are you fulfilling it effectively? Are you fulfilling it just on your teeth but you're not actually doing anything. When the Lord comes knocking on the door, will he find you faithful? We're transforming. We're talking about transformation, moving from that caterpillar to the butterfly. And in this season, at this time, you know the areas of your life that need working on to enable you to get from one stage to the other. Tobiah, sorry, Eliashib, the high priest, Hata Sheke, a guy that had huge responsibility before God, was busy just fraternizing with, the, with those that had, they, they don't have 
the agenda of God and his people at heart. Bring it. So what I, I want us to, so, so, so the thing is, Nehemiah, Tobiah was not an Israelite. He was an Ammonite. What did the Lord say about Ammonites? Let's look at Deuteronomy. It's, it, it, it says it in Nehemiah 13, verse 1 to 3. But also Deuteronomy 23, verses 3 to 5. Let's read it. Anyone that will get first will read that one. Nehemiah 13, 1 to 3. On that day they read in the book of Moses, in the audience of the people, and therein was found written that the Ammonite and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of God forever because they met not the children of Israel with bread and with water, but hired Balaam against them, that he should curse them. How, how be it our God turned the curse into a blessing. Mm -hmm. Now it came to pass when they had heard the law that they separated from Israel all the mixed up multitude. Thank you. So, so we see here that the Lord had instructed that no Ammonite was to come into the house of God was ever to come into the congregation of God. But it, this Tobiah was not only was he an Ammonite in the, amongst the congregation, he was even given a residence in the house of God. A real desecration, an abomination. It's like the high priest, was he sleeping? Had he forgotten? But remember, there are things called conflicts of interest. He had compromised already through marriage and relationship. The priests had began to marry, as we saw earlier on, the wrong people. And you know, marriage has a way of making people's brains such that, you know, you wonder. Uh -uh. Well, you know, don't you know? Don't you just know, the, don't you know what to do? You know that? You know? So... We want to pray. You, 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 you want to pray that in 2024, your life will seek those of like passion to run with. You want to pray that in 2024, you will seek and pray continually to be aligned with those who love God the way you are, who are running the same direction as you. So those of you that are not married, but God will, will want to align with you with partners in, at some point. Let that be your prayer point. That you will not marry the wrong person. You will marry the person God has ordained for you. That, that is on, fi on fire for God. You can't be on fire you've got someone that you're begging come to church. You can't be on fire you've got someone you're begging. The simplest, smallest things of God. You want to pray. You want to pray. You want to pray. You don't need. Let's look at Second Chronicles chapter nineteen, verse one and two, and twenty, verse thirty-five and thirty-seven. This is King Jehoshaphat. Just an example of what associations can do. You know, we don't take these things lightly. So, those of you that haven't gotten to, I'm telling you now, so you know how to to pattern your prayers. There are, there are certain things you just can't make a mistake on. There's no time. The time is too short. And if you're already in it, you begin to pray. Their fire will burn. There will be more on fire, more on fire, more on fire. Lord, in your mercy. Second Chronicles. In short, even, let's even just add 18, you know. Just write in your notes, 18 verse 1, I believe. Just so we just see the story, the trajectory of events. Speaking of this, yeah, we have some time. Second Chronicles. 19 verse 7 to 8. So just go to 18 verse 8. Yeah, just turn your page and just look at 18. 2 Chronicles 18 verse 1 and 2. Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. Mm. And oh. after certain years, he went down to Ahab to Samaria. Okay, your version says join the Philistine. Hmm, it's not saying it as nicely as some of my version says it. Has someone else circled another version where it says joined in marriage? Oh, you also said that. Okay, no, we don't want that. What does King James say? New King James. <laughs> my brother, for David, does he say something about marriage? Thank you. Hallelujah. Jehoshaphat had riches and honor 
in, ab in abundance. And by marriage, he allied himself with Ahab. Right, thank you. Verse 2, please. Thank you. After some years, he went down to visit Ahab in Samaria. And Ahab killed sheep and oxen in abundance for him and the people who were with him and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. Thank you, thank you. So what do we see here? King Jehoshaphat, so if we look in the history of kings, King Jehoshaphat was one of the good kings because the, the, he was a king of Judah. And you know, many a time they start off by saying this was a good king or this was an evil king. He did like his father David. Jehoshaphat was one of those that was a good king. He did like his father David. I.e. he loved the God, but what did it say? Ah, does anyone know about Ahab? Yeah. Does anyone know about Jezebel? Yeah. Can you imagine a good king? What did he say? Now, Jezebel had a great issue that and he allied himself by marriage with Ahab. With his eyes wide open, he caused his son to go and marry the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel. Jezebel, who was the Baba, the head, you know, she wore bow worship on her head like a crown, was chasing Elijah because he was counteracting the, her agenda of bow worship in Israel. Yes, a good king allows parents pray for your children. Pray that they will marry the one that is born of their bone and flesh of their flesh. That, will, that together they will passionately on fire worship God. There's no point saying you're married in a hurry and you got married the wrong person. And then every day is crying and worrying. Every day you're saying, pray this, pray that. He married with his eyes open, sent his son to marry Athalia. And if you read later on, you'll find out that Athalia, the, wife, the one that he married, killed all her grandchildren because she wanted to sit on the throne. So she's the representative of killing of the seed royal. You have those that kill potential, kill dreams, kill destinies. And so we're talking about who, what are your associations? You've got to have your eyes open in 2024. The enemy will present things that look glamorous. And you don't start running like a sheep. You know, onto it, running, so, you know, some that's got, you know, cotton wool in their head, and you're running after something that looks good, but really is. So this Jehoshaphat married, was, was, was aligned to Ahab through marriage. And then this bit that we read, we're still going to read 19. Where is my, my, yes, my sister. So he was aligned and was being convinced by Ahab to follow him to go to battle. We'll hear about that one later. So what did we say 19? What did we say with 19 verse 4? Verse 7 to 8. Please, yeah? Now therefore, let the fear of the Lord be upon you. 19, did we say 7 to 8? What verse did we say 19? 1 and 2. 1 and 2. Then Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned safely to his house in Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Therefore the wrath of the Lord is upon you. So we see, thank you my sister, please now, we may stand, we're still reading. So you see that we saw that in, in 18 verse 2, Ahab convinced King Jehoshaphat to follow him to battle in Ramoth Gilead. And this Ramoth Gilead was a people that had stopped give, paying tribute to King Ahab. And if you read the whole of 18, King Jehoshaphat said, isn't there a prophet that we can seek their counsel to understand whether we indeed we should go for this battle? They brought a prophet who said, don't go. But we see that what the bit that we just read. Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned in safety to, the, to his house in Jerusalem. But for the mercy of God, he still went. The question is, what are your associations? When God is telling you, who do you fear? Do you fear the associations or do you fear God? Imagine, in spite of God saying that he put a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets, don't go. Essentially, don't go because Ahab, you won't come back. And in spite of it, they went. And then the Lord spoke to a prophet and said to Jehoshaphat, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? 
and bring wrath on yourself from the Lord. So essentially, when we love what God hates, we're bringing his wrath on ourselves. What are your associations? My sister, please, read um, 20, verse 35 to 37, that same second Chronicles. 20, verse 35 to 37. To 37. After this, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, allied himself with Ahaziah, king of Israel, who acted very wickedly. And he allied himself with him to make ships to go to Tashish. And they made the ships in Ezion Geber. But El El Eliezer, the son of Dodava of Marasha, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, because you have allied yourself with Ahaziah, the Lord has destroyed your works. Then the ships were wrecked so that they were not able to go to Tashish. Thank you, my sister. So we see, you see, you wonder, you know, our God is so merciful and gracious. In 19, we saw that the Lord had rebuked King Jehoshaphat about his association with Ahab. And yet we see yet again that Jehoshaphat is going on a, on a, a, a campaign with, your, with Ahab's son. And the Lord is saying, these are with his in-laws. You know, these in-laws, when these in-laws are not of God, then sometimes you've got to use wisdom and know how you follow them. But he went and carried himself and allied with the in-laws that were contrary to the agenda of God. And the Lord destroyed their works. It says, because you have allied yourself with Ahazia, the Lord has destroyed your works. So the ships were broken and could not go to Tarshish. You know, there's no time for mistakes. It's either we love God or we don't love God. What can man do to you? The scripture tells us in Philippians that we should fear. We should, we should fear the one who can destroy our soul and our body and pass it into hellfire. That's who we should fear, not man. Because if you think you will please man 100% of the time, you won't. So don't even bother trying. It's an allegiance of one. So but Eliashib, the high priest, had the wrong association. And in 2024, we are starting early to lay the foundation as to, to enable our transformation, we've got to be intentional about our associations. Are they taking us closer to the things of God? Are they taking us away? Okay, we want to see. So, if back to that, Nehemiah, Mati Shaham Brakasana, you want to value your salvation. You want to value your consecration. You want to be intentional on how you transform. Tell your neighbor, I will be intentional. On my transformation process. In 2024. So, Nehemiah 13. We now are back to verse 8 and 9. It says, mm, And it was very displeased. So, and I came, so 7. And I came to Jerusalem and learned about the evil that Eliashib had done for, Tob for Tobiah by preparing a room for him in the courts of the house of God. And it was very displeasing to me. So I threw all of Tobias' household goods out of the room. Then I gave an order, and they cleansed the rooms, and I returned there the utensils of the house of God with the grain offerings and the frankincense. We see here that Nehemiah, Nehemiah acknowledged that Tobiah was outside covenant. You know, we are covenant people. And there's something about Proverbs 27 verse 17 tells us that iron sharpens iron. So, so, so does the face of a friend. Can we, can we turn to that piece quickly? To where, sorry, Proverbs 27 17. We see here that Tobiah was outside of God's covenant. 
Eliashib wasn't seeing what Nehemiah was seeing. He wasn't seeing the, the ramifications and the implications of his activity. What does it say, please? Proverbs 27, 17. Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Thank you. So iron sharpens iron, so does a, a, a man sharpen, sharpen the countenance of his friend. So we are supposed to, you're supposed to associate with those that will sharpen you. Not make your life duller. You know, if there's such a word. We're progressing. Our walk with God is progressing. And so you want to surround those that are, surround yourself with those, associate yourself with those who are sharpening what God is doing in your life. And so if CTMI is not the place, if you're not getting sharpened, find where you're getting sharpened, but I, I trust that you are being sharpened here. And so, Tobiah, Tobiah was not a covenant. So we are supposed to align with those that are of covenants. And what is a covenant? That is in partnership with God. God's promises, love his promises, on fire with the promises, passion with the promises, are heading somewhere. What did Matthew 21, just write it down, 12 and 13, what did Jesus do there? Jesus actually, what did he do? He overturned the tables of the money changers. Do we remember that story? Jesus went into the temple, he came to the temple, and what were they doing in the temple? They were buying and selling. We don't buy and sell in CTMI. When you come to the house of God, you're coming to pray. Yeah, you're coming to know God. You're coming to seek God. You're coming to find God. It's not a marketplace. They were selling. They were selling the things that were needed for offering. They were selling their birds. They were, you know, exchanging gold. Doing all sorts in the courts of the house of God. And it's the same thing. So what is it? The Bible says Jesus took a whip and he was chasing them out. He will say that my, about my the, 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 the house of God. Let's read it actually. Let me not paraphrase it. I'm sure we've got, mm, no, we haven't got time. So, just make a note of it. So the same thing we saw that, what did um, Nehemiah did? He says he gave an order. They cleansed. He chased out. He threw out Tobias things from the, that room. He asked that they cleanse the room. And that the things that were supposed to be in the room are put back. He restored the house of God to his noble. Now, what did that then mean? It then meant that the Levites were able to come back and fulfill their function. A part that was, and a purpose of God that was missing was now fulfilled because now their space had been restored to them. You know, we want to. He 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 did not confuse love from being nice. You know, some people say, oh, well, I've got to be nice. And because you want to be nice, you don't do what God says. You know, you say, people want to be nice. Oh, I don't want to offend. You know what? Jesus, when he was whipping them and chasing them out, he didn't care how they felt. His own was that the Lord's house would be a house of prayer. And what are you use? Are you passionate about what God has put in your house such that you are loving them into the kingdom? I'm not saying you're being nice and leaving them in their sin. Be nice and leaving things to go contrary to the agenda of God. In the, there's no word in the scripture about nice. The Bible doesn't call us the nice, it calls us the love. I went to rise. Tell your neighbor in 2024, I will actively walk away from anything that defiles my consecration. Hallelujah. We want to pray. We want to ask the Lord to help us. It's all about associations. We're starting 2024 acknowledging that iron sharpens iron. Acknowledging that who we associate with means something to God. Who we associate with affects our walk with God. It affects our fulfillment of purpose. And it impacts on other things that can go on or not go on in God's house. Say out to me, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you that I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Help me choose associations that glorify you. Father God, help me love as you do. Help me love people into your kingdom. I choose, Lord, not to compromise. 
in my actions. In my actions. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I choose, I choose to stand, to stand on, the on the truth of your word and apply it, and apply it wisely, wisely at, all times. at all times. Father Lord, Father Lord I will not take, will not take being, nice being nice as an excuse, as an excuse not, to you. not to obey you. Help me, Lord, Help me, Lord by, your spirit, by your spirit, in Jesus' name. As we can pray in the Spirit, ask the Holy Spirit to help you pray this in the exact mind of the Father. See, Holy Spirit, we lean upon you, Shaham, Rakasende, acknowledging that it's not of us, that, not of him that runneth, but not of him that willeth, but of you, our God, that showeth mercy. Matisha, Ham, Ahandarabasende, we look to you, Lord. We look to you, mighty God. We look to you, Lord, Shahambara Kasete Mahambro Kosanda. We look to you, Lord, for your enablement. We look to you for the cut the strength and the confidence, the love as you love, Lord. You loved us enough not to leave us where we were. And Father Lord, you enable us in our love not to leave those you bring in the path of our lives where they're at. But Father Lord, to shift them into alignment with kingdom purpose. Mahandarabasanda, surround us also with those, Mahanda, who will love us enough not to leave us where we are. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know, the Lord, you know, the Lord wants to, the Lord says that he gives ease. Everyone, I'll say, Lord, you know, it's, 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 Every, in this age of technology where everyone wants to, you know, worship online, do all sorts of online, you talk to people, why aren't you going into the house of God? They say, you know, they come with all sorts of excuses. I said, Lord, what's your, what do you want to do for those who take the time to come into your presence? And the Lord said that he's given ease. He's given everyone a mantle of ease. Everyone that's taken their time to be in his presence. The Lord said that he's given you, a mantle of ease. And what does that mean? I don't know what is ahead of you. I don't know the intricacies and the, compl the complexities of what is ahead of you. But the Lord says in Hebrews 11, verse 6, I believe, that without faith it's impossible to please God. That those who come to him must first believe that he is and the bit that is awesome is that he's a rewarder mm -hmm. of those who diligently seek him. The Lord wants you to know that you don't seek him in vain. Mm -hmm. The Lord wants you to know that you will never do anything for him and leave mm -hmm. without him rewarding you. Mm -hmm. And so, Father, we thank you. Thank you Jesus. We thank you for ease in this season. Mm -hmm. Father, we, we don't fully comprehend, <laughs> but Lord Jesus, we know the battles that when you're in it, if you're making things easy, Father, we thank you. If you're making those agendas easy, thank you. Easy to navigate. Easy, Father. We worship you for ease. We receive that mantle. We receive that anointing. We receive it in Jesus' name. But if you don't know Jesus, I invite you to make Jesus Lord of your life. It's the, to navigate 2024, to navigate life without him is not possible. The Bible says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens. The ability to do everything and anything is in Christ. Therefore, say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. I believe that the blood that you shed on the cross washed away my sins. I believe that you died and that you rose on the third day. And because you rose, I too have the hope that I will live and spend an eternity with you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me the power to live for you. I renounce Satan and all his words. Thank you for saving me. If you pray that prayer and are born again, the Bible says there's rejoicing in heaven where one sinner comes.